Paging Dr. Friday, we have a serious case of awesome. I'm Carl Azus, and you've landed on CNN 10. Today's show starts with three subjects that could change the world. One, getting rid of nuclear weapons on the Korean Peninsula. Two, a peace agreement between North Korea and South Korea. And three, improving relations between the two rival countries. It's all on the docket for an historic meeting between South Korean President Moon Jae-in and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. They're scheduled to sit down together today for the first formal meeting between their neighboring countries in more than 10 years. In fact, since fighting stopped in the Korean War in 1953, previous leaders of the two countries only held two summits before this one. The stakes are high. North Korea, a communist dictatorship, and South Korea, a presidential republic, have been at odds with each other for more than 60 years. And this summit is seen as an event that'll lay the groundwork for a meeting between the leaders of North Korea and the United States. That's expected to take place in May or June, and that would be the first time that those two countries' sitting leaders have ever sat down together. Friday's event will be held in what's known as the Peace House, a venue on the southern side of the Korean Demilitarized Zone. The Korean Demilitarized Zone, or DMZ, runs along the entire length of the Korean Peninsula. Set up in 1953, it separates North and South Korea by a two and a half mile wide strip of land. It's also an unlikely place to find contemporary art. This is the Yeongang Art Gallery. It's located in Yeoncheon County, South Korea, near the heavily fortified DMZ. Ah, 그래서 폐 공장을 활용을 해서 새로운 문화 콘텐츠를 구축하기 위해서 이쪽에 영광 갤러리라는 문화 공간을 만들게 됐습니다. The gallery exhibits art from around the world and serves as a concert venue. I've been coming here for the last two years, uh, working on an art project um, alongside the Imjin River. It's just extremely interesting to see the visual contrast between the military and the geography here. You have a few people farming around this area, but in the region we're standing right now, which is the non-civilian zone, there's not many people other than soldiers and uh, army barracks. So you have a lot of rare wildlife that has been able to flourish in this region because there's uh, so little human contact. That wildlife also has to coexist with traces of the Korean War. The government and the military don't know where the existing mines still are. You have to be very careful when hiking or walking through this area to make sure that you don't uh, find yourself in a bad situation. But for some local farmers, this area feels far from dangerous. Cho Moongil has lived here for 30 years. <laughs> With the upcoming summit between North and South Korea, there's potential for huge change in this region. But Cho doesn't believe the hype. Those involved in Yongan Gallery are more hopeful, however. The walls of the gallery have 16 plaques carrying messages from embassies all over the world. If art can act in some form or way as a beginning or a talking point to these discussions of peace or discussions of even commonality, that at least in some small way it does its part. Across the Pacific, the United States Senate has confirmed former CIA Director Mike Pompeo as America's 70th Secretary of State. The vote was 57 to 42. One independent senator and several Democrats joined all of the Republicans who were there in confirming Pompeo. President Donald Trump nominated him to the job last month after firing former Secretary of State Rex Tillerson. The president said he and Pompeo were more alike in their thinking. 10 second trivia. The Clipper, the Breeze, and the Airflow were all what? United States ships, motorcycle models, Gillette razors, or American sedans? 
the Packard Clipper, the Plymouth Breeze, and the DeSoto Airflow were all models of American sedans. None of those makers or models is still in production today. In fact, the American sedan as we know it may be going the way of the dodo. The sedan, a two or four door car that can seat at least four people, has been a fixture on American roads for almost a century. And it should continue to be under models like the Honda Accord or Toyota Camry. But auto industry experts say the three major American car makers, Ford, General Motors, and Fiat Chrysler, appear to be putting the brakes on sedan production and focusing instead on making more trucks and SUVs, sport utility vehicles. General Motors has reduced the number of Chevy, Buick, and Cadillac sedans it's making. Chrysler has stopped manufacturing the Dodge Dart and Chrysler 200. And Ford plans to make more SUVs and trucks in America, but to stop selling all of its passenger car models here, except for the Mustang and a new model called the Ford Focus Active. In sales, SUVs first passed sedans in 2015. The larger vehicles have more space, their gas mileage has been improving, and experts say the American manufacturers can make more money on them than the classic sedan. And without Mr. McGregor, Elmer Fudd, or any natural predators, nothing bugs them. They haven't a hair in the world. Maybe they keep an ear out for approaching tourists, if they care at all, but they seem to have no problem getting their bunnies met, spending their Lapora days and nights pelleting around a veritable garden of peace. I'm Carl Azuz, and that's all folks for CNN 10.